You have found authentic business adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Audio episodes can be found in the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. And today we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from DJ Newville, the owner of Hall It All. So DJ, how is it going today? Good. You got to tell us here, what is Hall It All? Let's start there. Um, we are a junk removal business. So we, right. we remove anything and everything that somebody does not want from their house, business, property managers, storage units, everything. All we, right. we haul it all away. So when you say all, you literally mean all? Like all, is it everything. Like I got a busted up pool table, I got a grand piano, I have a dead cat, whatever? Yep, yep. everything. It's going away. Yes, if we can't do it ourselves, we find someone that can do it. Wow, all right. Yeah. And who, a typical client, is gonna be somebody moving or someone that's been hoarding or? Um, I'd say kind of everything, everybody, I mean, um, we get a lot of people that just have excess flow of garbage. You know, they got the Amazon boxes or, you <laughs> that know. That's the nicest way I've heard of hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you know, holiday garbage or whatever that they can't fit in the garbage bin that call us. All right. Anything big or small. Um, furniture, this is a big time of year where people get new furniture. They call us, say, hey, I got my old couch. We come get it. All right. All yeah. right. And you, so let's figure out, uh, one, what do you do with the stuff? Somebody says, hey, I got this old beat up couch. Normally in college, I would swap. <laughs> we just go curb driving looking for the better couch yeah. and just leave it at the curb, trade it. What do you guys end up doing with it? We try to keep everything we can out of the landfill. Okay. So ultimately we have to take quite a bit to the landfill, mm -hmm. but we try to don't, we donate whatever we can. We donate to Goodwill, Salvation Army. All right. um, got some other local church rescues that we donate to. Sometimes we'll sell a few things if we have to, whatever we can, to, and, I, and I'm up for it to every customer. We just try to recycle or keep whatever we can All right. out of the landfill, and gotcha. that's our goal. So the question that it keeps coming up in my mind is why would anyone get into a business where you're dealing with essentially trash or someone's trash, the whole trash treasure thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Why would you get in a business like that? Um, I started it because... Um, I saw a need through selling real estate where people right. are just stressed out. And that's where a lot of our customers come from. They're, they're going through the process of selling a house. They got an accepted offer and they got to close in a couple of weeks and they got this stuff oh. that's left All right. that they don't want to deal with. And they don't have the time or the ability to take it to the dump themselves. And a lot of realtors will just call us and say, hey, DJ, can you come oh, nice. help this customer out? And just empty it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's, I kind of saw that need for that. Mm -hmm. And there's always been junk haulers. And I think there's kind of a big gap between the big companies of junk haulers and your average guy who doesn't have a business, isn't have a license, um, is not insured. And you're not sure, oh, what's going to happen if that guy comes to my house? Oh, okay. So I took it right in the middle of, okay, we're going to be a fully professional company. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have a huge overhead like a big company and we're gonna provide the same services as a big company. All right, <clears throat> so I mentioned the big overhead, correct me if I'm wrong here, initially is gonna be a truck, right? Or something yeah. to haul this yeah. stuff with. Truck and a trailer. All right. So that's, we, we have a seven by 14 dump trailer that we use. It's oh, wow. essentially <laughs> like a 15 yard dumpster that comes with us. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we can literally haul anything and everything. Might take us more on one trip. Yeah. Depending on how much stuff you have, but. All right. But that helps us keep our costs effective too. I mean, we can handle something as small as one couch or we can handle 10 couches. Wow, somebody has so. 10 couches, that's <laughs> a different problem. <laughs> that is cool. So when you, do you have to have a warehouse or anything to store some of the stuff if you're trying to sell it or recycle it or donate We do, it? we do have a couple of um, uh, just like storage facilities that we okay. use currently. Mm -hmm. um, eventually that's part of our plan is to have a warehouse to right. kind of help with having more you know time to to, mm -hmm. to get rid of stuff but got it yeah so you are you're a real estate agent now right i am yes okay. yeah so what made you decide to branch off into hauling trash essentially because <clears throat> i imagine there's some real estate agents that are going to say hey i want to call dj but i also know he's a real estate agent yeah and i'm very upfront to my to my real estate 
um, clients too that, hey, I'm not here to, to steal your customer. Mm -hmm. I'm here to just help service your customer right. and, and pass on the same ideas that I have that, hey, I'm here, with, let's make this closing easy or whatever. Because a lot of times I found as a realtor, you're getting last second oh. headaches. Like you go to do a walkthrough a day before closing and there's 10 cans of paint that your buyer doesn't want and they're upset about. Oh. <laughs> and now you have a seller that's like, well, I'm not going to deal with it. And I didn't know that was a thing. That this kind of closes <laughs> a gap. Oh, yeah. People leave stuff behind in houses all the time. No, I guess. Yeah, or the, paint or whatever. Yeah the, yeah. the last house that we bought, there was a ton of crap in the basement. And it was mostly paint from. Way back when. Oh, my god. Stuff gosh. you'd there all was, dried up or you're never going to use it. Yeah, it was a hot pink that I'm like, nobody should have sold this. Nobody should have said, yeah. this is the color, right? Nobody. Yeah. Yet here it was in the basement. And I was thinking how do you get rid of paint? And you look it up and it's like, dump it out, dry it. Mm -hmm. And then it's a pain. And then you got, Oh my God. And especially when, I mean, what I've kind of noticed is when people are buying a house, it's a, it's supposed to be a fun experience, a good Should experience. Be. Yeah. Not always, it's not always, but it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. So, but you as a buyer, you're pre usually pretty excited about moving into it. And one of the last things you want to deal with is other people's stuff. Yeah. And a lot of times buyers will just say, well, I'll just take the house and I'll figure it out. Well, yeah, that's what we did. We didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of bridges that gap where, you know, for pretty low fees, sometimes it's just a really low fee of just coming to get the few things that are left. And, yeah. Um, we help people out. So that All right. Keeps, them, keeps everybody happy. That is cool. I yeah. like it. Yeah, we, uh, with my company, we answered phones for a mortgage company. And some of the calls that we would get from people were just like, you didn't think of this now? Or you just yeah. thought of this yeah. now? Like, you're... You're closing in six hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this seems like something that should have been figured out over the months before. Yeah. But whatever. It yep. just. Yep. That's, uh, that's. We also have accountants that get calls on April 14th or April 15th, really. File my doing? taxes. Yeah. Be like, hey, can you file my, my taxes? I think they're due today. You think they're due today? <laughs> so I get it. People cr yeah. procrastinate. It's a yeah. thing. So how do you market a business like this? Um. Really, r referral and word of mouth is my okay. is my huge portion that we do. I mean, we take a lot of pride that we ask every customer for a review, good or bad. Nice. Um, and I just I'm very upfront about that, and that kind of helps us a lot. And then I do a lot of Facebook advertising. All right. Um, through the Facebook targeting of different different areas that I okay. want to target and different interests that people have. Is that something you do, or do you outsource that? Um, I do it myself currently. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Are you good? You get results from I, it? I think I'm pretty good at it. Oh. We get pretty good results. Yeah. I mean, right. I know that as a business owner long term, it's not viable for me to be doing it myself the whole time. Right. But I just been trying to lay a platform. Okay. This is what I want to do each week. Mm -hmm. And I kind of laid on Facebook's pretty nice. It lets me just kind of plan it out on a schedule so I can go do a month's worth of advertising, put it in there. And, and that kind of helps the All small right. business owner too to yeah, you know, I guess, be on every single day or whenever you want to do it. So. Sure. Yeah, I guess there's no judgment on yeah. whether you no, pay yeah. someone to do it or not. I've yeah. certainly paid people to do ads, and I've done it myself. And I'm not that good, but I think oftentimes I did a better job than the people I paid. I know for sure I did a better job than a lot of people I paid. Yeah, so, yes. yes. Yeah, I think I'm probably in, in the middle. I mean, I know there's great companies out there that do it Yeah. Um, and, and have great results. Mm -hmm. And I know that it costs a lot to get really good results sometimes, too, with some of these companies. Does, so yeah. So, you know, it's a it's a flight <laughs> the fight of the small business to find a way that you can and we we stay very very busy with it so it, right. it helps us, it helps us so I'd say about fifty fifty is referrals and and our active marketing on Facebook and okay. and just real realtor marketing is where a lot that we do is just reaching out to local realtors making us aware hey we're here whenever you need us gotcha so house has got to be emptied we're here to empty yep. that house yep. Peanut butter, chocolate, super easy. Yeah, and we pride ourselves same day of service. We don't charge extra fees for same day if we oh, do. Oh wow! We we can't guarantee we'll be the same day, but we'll do everything we can possible right. to find someone to get there to to help you. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Tell me about the people that you have hauling the junk. You have yourself, but you also yep. have it sounds like some employees or helpers of some kind. Yep. Yep. I have um, one full time helper and a part time helper. Okay. Um, they they absolutely love they love doing it too. They love. My big thing, the reason I got into this is I actually, there was a guy that I was 
help him sell a house for him, and he did the, does his business as well. So, oh. hey, if you want to make extra money and you work hard, you can come yeah. work for me. All right. So I did it for a while, and he kind of showed me the ropes. Yeah. And I love the physical part of it. And that's the same with my other employees that I have. They love the physical, being outside, mm -hmm. being not on a set schedule. Right. Where it's the same. There's no monotony at all. There's you just We just <laughs> never know what we're getting into. I bet not. <clears throat> And I keep it really, really fun. I, a lot of times I tell my guys, hey, we're headed to this house. And they're like, what are we doing? And I said, I'll let you know when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they open the door and the bats come flying out, right? We'll let you know. Hey, there's a piano, guys. Let's, yeah. get, let's get this piano. Man, he didn't tell me that. No, you, went, you went, came up to work today. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So how do you find people? How do you find employees or the worker bees, whatever, to do the work? Because it's got to be sometimes when that piano's It's challenging. There, it's challenging. You got yeah. the big slate billiard table that's been cracked or something like that. Yeah, it, what we pride ourselves on is finding ways to do it safely and really taking our time of, okay, like a pool table, for instance. Mm -hmm. You could take four people to haul that upstairs and you can get it upstairs, no problem. I mm -hmm. mean, it'll still be heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but if you take two people and bring the proper equipment and cut it up or break it down, yeah. you can save yourself a whole lot of time. Yes, you might spend a little more time, but you save yourself the manpower. All right. And the risk of it falling down the stairs. Yeah, and, your spine. Yeah. So we take a lot of pride in going really slow and All just right. thinking the problem through before we just, I, I just think of it as, here's, here's my challenge. Mm -hmm. Just like they said, math, with, you're going to use all these story problems, I, we use the story problems. <laughs> <laughs> you have a two-ton pool table that yeah. has to go through half-ton set of stairs, whatever. All so right. how, how do you do it? And we think of the most effective way to do it. All right. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a little longer, but we're, we're okay with that. Tell me, you must have things like tube TVs or freezers or things like that where I don't even know. I mean, we had an old dehumidifier that's still sitting in my basement. Yeah. Because I looked online to try to figure out where I'm supposed to put this. And it essentially said, good luck. Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest challenge I think people have is they don't know what to do with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we pride ourselves that we find the places that properly take them. Like, for example, dehumidifiers and things that have Freon, yeah. they go down to the, to scrap, to the local scrapyard. Okay. As long as you do it properly, they're okay with that. All right. So you just have to find the right avenues of where stuff is supposed to go. Got it. And that's kind of like our secret sauce of, okay, this is where we know to take stuff and, and solve that problem for mm -hmm. people. Is there anything, are there ever trips that people call you up for and they're like, hey, I have an old spoon I want to get rid of or something like that? <laughs> or you're just like, eh, the trip uh, isn't going to be worth it for either one or something yeah, like I that? Yeah, I do get that, especially with like my Facebook ads. Sometimes you get people that are not in the area oh. that will end up seeing it, and they'll call me and I, and I tell them, hey, this is how much it's going to cost. It's not going to be cost effective for us to come. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll charge you, but I can help you find someone else that's closer to you. Got it. And okay. usually we work it out where it's just more cost effective, and I, I'll just refer it out to somebody I know. All right. We have a pretty good network of people, even really throughout Wisconsin. Okay. I know I've made different connections of different owners that do the same kind of work. Nice. So, and where are you guys based? Um, I actually live in Beloit, but I base myself techni technically in Evansville. Oh, gotcha. That's, okay. That's where my kids go to school, and we don't have a physical location, so we cover all of Rock and Dane and Green County. Oh, well, that's so, pretty big. It's a big area. Big gamut, yeah, yeah, it's a big area. Everywhere and, this signal is reaching locally, I guess. Yeah. All yeah. right. You'll get calls later nationally, but it's all good. <laughs> it's it's all good. Nothing wrong nationally either. No. So we help them find. You know, like I said, my goal is just. And it was the same in real estate. Let's find a way to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, everybody wants to get paid at the end of the day. That's what business is about. But right. let's find a way to help somebody. If we can help them, they like our service, they'll pay us, and hopefully refer to the next person. Yeah. And that's just what we always pride ourselves on. Mm -hmm. We help that's people. That's cool. That's the name of the game. I love it. Yeah. So when you were working for this guy, did you end up buying the business from him, or you just moved nope. into a different territory? We, we just kind of um, we kind of merged off, we, and then we worked together at, with two different businesses, just kind of collaborating. Yeah. And um, he's semi-retired, and, oh, and nice. I just we just kind of went from there. I kind of he was kind of more of southern Wisconsin, mm -hmm. like on the state line border, and I always kind of flocked more towards the Madison, Dane County area with um, being in Evansville. Okay. So we kind of really didn't smash heads there, and I've always real realized that competition is a good thing definitely 
that yeah. draws more brand awareness. Mm -hmm. Like I've never banged on my competition. I have no. I, I, the more haulers there are out there that are doing it legitimate, the better mm -hmm. for everybody. There's tons and tons of business. If you just take a drive out on a country drive, you can see garbage <laughs> and stuff everywhere. Oh my gosh. So there's all kinds of people that don't even know we exist. All right. And, you know, I'm trying to get out there and say, hey, we're here. We're here to help you. We're not super expensive. We're, we're mm -hmm. just here to help you in any way we can to get rid of something. That is cool. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting because we, I had my great uncle passed away I don't know, this had to be a decade ago. And we helped empty that house. And that guy, super smart guy, was a teacher forever. I don't want to say like 50 years, something like that. He was a long time. He had newspapers from Wisconsin Rapids of every major event for the past, whatever it was, 50, 60 yeah. years, something like that. Yeah. He had JFK getting shot, Challenger exploding. Oh, that's so cool. Right, super yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. But it was just like, it's the Wisconsin Rapids... Yeah, no one's gonna want whatever, it. Yeah, right? yeah. And he had, um, I remember he had a Wisconsin Blue Books, which I don't know exactly what they are, but they must come out every year yeah. or two, something yep. like that. From like 1910 or something like that up to, uh, I want to say current. So it was early 2000s, maybe late 90s, something like that. Super that's cool. cool. That's super cool. Yeah. Dozens of books. I'm like, what are you gonna do with it? What am I yeah. gonna do with this? Yeah. I ended up taking that stuff home because it was so cool. And then years later. I finally found some attorney that just wanted the blue books. I was just like, take them. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad recycling them. Yeah. And I feel like you can't trash them. Like somebody, these have Can value to someone. Yeah. I don't know who it yeah. is. Yeah. Whoever it is, just take them. Yep. I don't know what we end up doing with the newspaper stuff. But it was super cool to read through that. Yeah. Like Reagan getting shot and yeah. like, oh, I forgot all this stuff happened. That's kind of a lot, a lot of the fun that we have too that I really love. It's, it's, it's almost like a historical treasure hunt sometimes yeah. when people say, hey, Here's a bunch of stuff in my basement I don't want anymore. It, like, same example, we do a lot of estate cleanouts where someone passes away, mm -hmm. the kids have gone through what they want, and now it's just time, okay, we got to get rid of that stuff. And it's, it's a fun hunt. Yeah. You never know what you're going to find. Oh, my gosh, that's got to be cool. <clears throat> Other times it's got to be <laughs> kind of odd. Oh, yeah. There's also How many addicts are there? <laughs> <laughs> that's it doesn't funny. end, yeah. So what is the, for fun, what's the grossest thing you've had to clean up? Oof. Or get rid of, I should say. Oh, man. Um, we had a house that a guy passed away and he was laying there for five days. Oh. So, and he hoarded food. Like oh, man. Garbage food. So that was, uh, it was pretty nasty. All right. Was so, he still there when you had to come? No, he was there. He was taken away, thankfully, the day before. That We do not haul corpse away. <laughs> <laughs> we don't deal with the body fluid That's part. That's what the business card says, <laughs> right? Everything but a corpse. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, it was just, uh. A really long, it was a really long time renter for one of our landlord clients, and oh he unfortunately God. passed away and um, was not very tidy of a person. I so can't imagine was, what that smelled like. It's it was awful. It All was right. in September of last year, so it's still warm and there were oh. many flies. But hey, you know we we do have the proper equipment as far as like respirators and suits all right. and all our guys. So we all wear the stuff when we need to. We don't like to because it's hot. Right. But. Um, yeah, in that, that little apartment, it was amazing how much stuff he had in that little apartment. That it is so <laughs> crazy that the guy's hauling away stuff in the apartment in this full garb, I can imagine. This guy's just living in it. Yeah, oh yeah my he gosh. just thinks, yeah, this is the way I live. And I, we're thinking, this stuff's got to go. Oh, my gosh, that's <clears> crazy. Yeah. What's the biggest thing you guys had to haul? The biggest thing? Hmm. I don't know. We've hauled quite a few boats. All right. A boat. Um, Oh yeah. Just call you and get it oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, um, we had one that it was, uh, I believe it was a foreclosure. It was a real a realtor that was calling, or a realtor calling on behalf of the bank. Okay. Um, this boat had been in the backyard, who I would say at least 30, 20, 30 years. Oh my God. Filled up with dirt oh. and water. So we we had the full clean out of the house too, but that was part of the thing we were challenged with. They had 153 tires in the backyard. So we had an entire. If you look at my website, there's a. Uh, there's a blurb with uh, that we haul tires, and there's a a full dump trailer, entire dump trailer with all those tires on. Wow! And then yeah, we had to figure out how to get the boat out of there. So we <laughs> oh, um, awesome. banged some holes in it with some mallets to drain the water out, hooked it up with a chain, and pulled it out and got it up on a on a um, boat trailer and got it out of there. Hold, took it to the dump. Oh my gosh! But yeah, it was <laughs> that was uh, that was a challenge, and we love challenges. All I right. love it. There's nothing better than I like when I show up to a place and they say, you're never going to fit all this in your trailer. And I'm like, <laughs> game <your> on, <laughs> challenges on. 
Just like the Tetris game in Nintendo. It's like, oh, yeah, it's going to fit. All We're right. going to make it fit. Challenge accepted. I <laughs> yep. love it. Yep. That is cool. So what are some of the things that you've learned for, you've been doing this three years, I think? Yeah, three years. All yeah. right. Three years where I've only, like, about well, four years total when I worked for the guy. All right. And then three years. No. So what are the, some of the things that you've learned from the course since you started till now? Hmm. Where you're like, oh, I messed so that up. So many things. All right. <laughs> I'd say every day I learn something. All um, right. Just to be smart, that it's not always the f the best solution is not always the fastest solution. Okay. Especially when moving big objects, mm -hmm. using leverage. Like for example, when we move hot tubs, we use um, PVC pipes. Oh. We'll tip, usually we'll tip. Usually two or three people. We we'll tip them up on their side, and we'll put them put PVC pipes underneath them. We can just so roll them right roll out of the yard. The and Egyptian it, way, right? Yeah. <laughs> just saves a lot. I mean, just just the way that I've learned different. T tips and techniques of okay this is going to take a little bit longer mm -hmm. but it's going to be safer to do it this way and it's just stuff that really pushes my comfort zone if you had known me before any of this venture yeah i used to work in an office behind a desk and computer i never would have thought i'd be out in the heat sweating breaking oh, nice. stuff and i absolutely love that and i love that i'm able to go out and and find different solutions for stuff but and i just have a good network of people when i don't have a clue how to do something, <laughs> I call up and say, hey, I got this boat. Like, the boat was a great example. I didn't know what I was going to do with a All boat right. full of dirt and, and water. And I called the guy and said, hey, what do I do with this? And he goes, well, first thing you do is punch a hole and get all that water out of it. All right. And, you know, just finding <laughs> solutions that help people in that. And, and what I've also learned is when you get into a tough spot with a customer, just communicate with them because I think everybody is very forgiving when you communicate ahead of time. Oh, it's, it's in the game. Yeah. When you don't communicate, like, so if you get in a situation where, okay, this job's not going to get finished on time for whatever reason, mm -hmm. or we're having a problem fixing this, here's what I can offer for you for a solution. Here, here's why this comes up. And when you get that ahead of time to people, mm -hmm. or at least community people, everybody's really understanding. Yeah. You know? And as opposed to, hey, I didn't finish the job. And they're like, well, I have to have it done today. Right. Well, okay, now you're scrambling. Right. So I think that's probably one of the biggest, one of the big things I've learned is communicate. Just communicate the best you can to people. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, they're going to be very forgiving to you. Totally agree. Yeah, <laughs> with, with calls on call, we have this thing, does the customer know? So you have to ask yourself, does the customer know? So in being like somebody, let's say one of their clients or something like that, canceled an appointment, changed an appointment, added this thing or that thing, and you want to get that communicated to our clients as fast as you can, and then whatever changes they have to make, you get it, get it to the caller as fast as you can. Yeah. Because a lot of times people just assume that since they know, everybody knows. Yeah. And it's rarely the case especially yeah. for stuff like that when it comes to yeah. schedules. Yeah. And everybody's got this thing going on. Yeah. It's everybody's clear. busy. I mean, everybody's busy. So well, they, they end up with a yeah. boat in their backyard yeah. for 30 years. Apparently, they have too much going on. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I forgot I had a boat. <laughs> I left it there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it's one of those just keep track, man. Does yeah. the customer know? And if the customer doesn't know, <clears throat> tell them, right? And just take care of what needs to happen so that everybody can get their ducks in a row. Yep. Otherwise. And I, and I, think, I think it's big, especially... We have, we, we have so much information in this information age. You have mm -hmm. so much that's in your head. It's so easy, like you said, to assume or, or forget to, to communicate. And if you just had taken that one second to do it, right? boom. Yeah. It's yeah. All it doesn't resolved. take that much time. Right. And right. it just keeps everybody can adapt rather yep. than saying like, oh, by the way, there's a brick wall now. Yeah. <laughs> Running out instead yeah. of like, hey, <laughs> the brick wall moved. It's over here now. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Are you, tell me what's the plan? Is the plan to add trucks and people and yeah. build up, take over the world, or just maintain where you're at now? We're, we're, we want to get bigger, but we don't want to get too big. We don't want to lose sight to our main core of, of, hey, we are a smaller company giving affordable solutions. So, yeah, our, our, our plan is to, um, by this time next year, we want another truck and trailer. Right. And then eventually, we do want to span out into the dumpster service because sometimes that's just easier for people. Yeah. They just need that extra time for whatever reason to yeah. do it themselves and throw it in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. So that is our plan to, to get into that rental business at some point too, to offer, hey, yeah. if this isn't a good solution where you need a, or you want us to take it out, we'll bring you a dumpster or a trailer to park there yeah. and you can fill that up. All right. So that that's probably the next couple year plan that we're 
where it'll end up expanding to. Gotcha. You mentioned earlier about um, the guys that are just like a, a guy with a truck um, and permits and stuff like that. Are there licenses or permits or certifications or whatever for this industry? Um, for So the big thing is insurance. Oh, okay. Uh, being insured and having an insured hauler is a huge thing. All right. Um, we've had it happen. We just had it happen about a month ago where a lady had a, a brand new linoleum floor and unfortunately... What we were moving for is scratched her floor. Oh, and, no. Um, we had taken the legs off of a, off of, um, a height of bed, and it just scraped the floor. And we were real upfront with her and said, we apologize. And she was real nice about it. And we turned it over to our insurance company, and insurance is taken care of for her. All right. There, there's a huge gap, I think. In, and there's nothing wrong with just the guy with the trailer. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure the guy with the trailer has got insurance or, or knows, you know, I mean, just so you have liability-wise covered. Yeah. Cause I mean, it just doesn't take much for, for a couch or whatever, fall down the stairs, go through a wall, and someone gets hurt. Right. And then, well, then what happens? Then you got a you bad know? day. Yeah. All right. All right. But, that yeah, as far, um, as far as license-wise, um, we haul to the Rock County, the Rock County um, dump in Janesville, and you do okay. have to be licensed there. So All right. um, it's pretty easy. It's an easy permit that you just pay to do. But okay. it, it, they basically want to make sure that you are properly disposing of items. All right. Is there a, some national association of junk haulers or something like that? <laughs> I'm sure there is. I haven't found it, but I am part of a lot of, we have, there's quite a few national junk removal groups on Facebook. Oh, there is? Facebook. Okay. Yeah. And we collaborate all the time of, hey, we go on there and say, it's people go on there, especially newer business owners, and say, I got pictures of this that we're supposed to do an estimate for. Does anybody have an idea of oh. how much we should be charging? Yeah. Or, you know, I posted on there a few months ago. We had our first hot tub that was actually in the um, in the deck that we had to cut out, and I never oh, cut one. Okay. So I we had always just hauled them away and not cut them. So I, I reached out to that group and said, "Hey, this is how you do it. Yeah. This is the right sawzall tip to use. Oh, it made nice. the job super easy, and it just saves us from having to reinvent things. Yeah. Because so, I guarantee there is a hauling company somewhere in this country <laughs> that has done everything that I'm about to do. All right. <clears throat> so you have that so use that network trust. a lot. Yeah. All right. That yeah. is super cool. Yeah. That's clever. <laughs> I yeah. like it. The I guess as far as location and stuff like that, are you running from Beloit to Yeah, all over. County and all yep. that kind of stuff? Okay. Yep. So we just do it based on our customers, based on our schedule of what when we schedule people, we try to group people together. All right. But whatever we have to do, we have we're like I said, Dane, Rock County. Mm -hmm. Our primary is Rock County and Green County, but we do most of Dane County as well too. But okay. We, I will find a solution. I tell people I will find you a solution. I will not nice. leave you hanging. How do you figure out what kind of vehicle, what kind of truck to get to haul that trailer? Because in my mind, you want something kind of beat up already because it's going to get beat up. Yeah, and I actually have taken the opposite view of it. Oh, right. my truck, My truck's actually only a year old. Which, oh, nice. And the reason why, for one, I want the professional business image. Right. Because I think right or wrong, there's just a... a um, a stigma in the industry of, okay, that's just a junk guy that has this beat up truck. Right. So I tell my guys, hey, look, we have this expense, I have this expensive truck, we need to be careful. All right. And it also raises awareness to, hey, we need to be careful because that's our number one thing is safety. Oh. So if we're going slower and right. we're putting things in the trailer slower, we're less apt to beat things up. All right. So we take a lot of pride of, hey, but yeah, stuff does happen. There's, there's, there's just no way around it that. Yeah. Um, but that makes sense. I like that. When I was a mechanic, there were two groups of mechanics. I remember we got new uniforms, and you could always tell the bad mechanics, or maybe more learning mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> um, because Inexperienced they had the, mechanics? They had the red shirts, and the good mechanics, one that had been there forever, had the white shirts. Huh. And I always thought a white shirt on a mechanic has got to be the dumbest thing in the world. But on the flip side, you know what you're doing because that mechanic wasn't spilling a thing. Right, and they took so, their time. At least they weren't intentionally spilling a thing. Every once right. in a while, things happen. But yeah. I'm like, how many people are getting underneath the car with a tuxedo on? Yeah. But it was interesting how the white shirts, man, they stay clean. And I, I just view it as it, it's a business asset. So, yeah. so part of my business, I know that I'm going to have a truck. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to want something that, hey, it's, it's going to, one, start tomorrow and pull all this weight. Yeah. So that's why I, I kind of went the opposite route of, hey, we need to have nice all equipment. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, you know, it's funny the, where trucks have come from hauling. 
I borrowed a buddy's truck um, last, I don't know, October, November, something yeah. like that, to haul an old Plymouth truck, 1940, whatever. And it had a little display where it showed the heat or the temperature of the tires, their oh, air pressure. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> It yeah. had 50 million cameras for backing up. It wasn't yeah. a challenge. It'd be oh up. yeah, that's that's always been my challenge growing up. Like, yeah, I was always thought before I even got in this, how am I going to back up trailers? That's well, why you, that guy's boat was there for 30 years. Yeah, he tried yeah, to back exactly. it up once. Yeah. I was like, screw this. Yeah, yeah, the cameras have made it so much easier oh and gosh. safer. Yeah. It, it's it, you know you don't have to have two people to hook up to a trailer. Even backing in, mm -hmm. we always have a person back back there guiding us. But it really does help having a camera. Okay, you can kind of yeah. see where you're at with stuff. It makes you makes you kind of lazy in a way, so you got to be careful. Okay, that's fair. don't just trust the camera, but yeah. it, it does it does help for sure. No, that's totally fair. I just yeah. had my backup camera go out. Oh man! And I when I back out of my driveway, I'm always like you get within inches, right? You feel like a yeah. superhero because you can parallel park anywhere. My camera went out, and I'm like, oh boy! I don't have like normally before cameras, you would have the little mark. You'd figure out something yeah. to look at. To be like, you back up to this point, no, not and anymore. that's your mark. Now I'm like, I don't know where my mark is. It's My screen is flashing. It's doing something. I'm going to run over this bush unintentionally. Yeah. So luckily I didn't, but yeah, that's how it goes. Good. Yeah. yeah. You rely on stuff like that. Yes. It's funny. Yes. I used to make fun of people with backup cameras. <laughs> I'm like, these are the best thing in the world since headlights. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. I get yep. it. Tell me, as you grow... Finding employees, is that going to be a challenge, do you see? Or in the end, it sounds like you're having fun doing this. I'm having fun, and I mean, I do see it that it's going to be a challenge, but also if we can find like-minded people that are looking to have fun at work, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's some really hard, hot days, Yeah. but we just, we really do try to pride ourselves, hey, let's try to make the best of this. Let's mm -hmm. try to have fun with this. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think we'll be okay. okay. I mean, and I think there's... I think people are pleasantly surprised when I do it. People work for me. Man, that was hard, but it was only hard for about 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now we're back in the truck driving. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we spent most of, most of our time driving to customers. Windshield time. Yeah. We spend lots of windshield time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, and that's where we have a lot of fun, too, because we right. just keep it, keep it light. And it's, you know, uh -huh. I tell people, hey, you want to take a nap? Take a nap. I'm driving. You're good. <laughs> nice. We're all good. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Sleeping on the job. Yeah. Where else can you sleep on the job? Get ready because you don't know what's about to hit. You know, about to hit you. You're about to hit with this safe right. or whatever. We're about to move. So. Oh, my gosh. I can only <laughs> imagine. I helped a buddy move a safe. Uh, we were using my engine hoist. And all I could think is who, like the manufacturer's got to move these on a daily basis. This is yeah. just another day yeah. for them. Yeah. And this, for us, it was a project. See, I they like figure out a system. And we do, too. We oh figure out gosh. a system. Okay, this is what we, this is what we do. Do we need to use a dolly? Can we use PVC? PVC pipes are the best All right. for big stuff. Okay. Because you can roll. Even a safe? Yeah, even okay. a safe. <laughs> it's like, James, and, yes. and, the, and the little four-wheeled carts, yeah. those things are the best. They're the best $20 a business can spend. All right. Our hauling is, is just having a cart. Throw it on nice. a cart. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Put it on wheels. All right. <clears throat> that is cool. What are some things that you just want the general public to know about... I want to say junk haulers, essentially. Um, I try not to, like, is that a good phrase? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, just that, you know, our company, for sure, we're here to help people. And right. I think a lot of people are, too. They just want to come up with a solution for you, get rid of your stuff, and yeah. do it as the most ineff efficient and best way possible for you. All and, right. And um, just because, when you know, there's there's ones out there that don't look, the, don't have the prettiest truck, whatever, I would say don't judge them. Just see what they are. See what yeah. they're all about. Judge them by their customer service first. Yeah. You know, if I had a junk hauling truck, that thing would be destroyed. Because <laughs> I guess there's sometimes you see the construction trucks where it looked like you hit every pillar you possibly could. But I think after a while. And, and I guess the, the problem with that is you have to, like, like, I'm like, I can't have my truck down. Right. I need that truck and mm -hmm. I need that trailer. So. Yes, I understand. Not everybody can just go out and buy a truck and do it. Right. But you got to have the most reliable thing possible. And mm -hmm. you know, I just say, again try to take pride. Okay, people are. This is my first image as I show up. Yeah. So I want them to be like, hey, that's a nice professional company that showed up, and they're not right. this giant company. Mm -hmm. That's where we're trying to give it's off. Just so. a dirty truck with a bunch yeah. of dirt balls and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Sounds very systematized, which is awesome. Yeah. 
How has your real estate business, or has your real estate business fed? Yeah, the they've fed each other. Yes, okay. definitely. I've had situations where people call me, clean on the sit and say, hey, do you happen to know a realtor? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. They All call right. me up and say, hey, we got to list this house and we have a bunch of junk. And I'm like, hey, well, I do that. And they're like, really? We didn't know you did that because we would have called you a week ago to get all the stuff. Now we just have the leftover stuff. Oh, funny. So, yeah, I, and it's probably the hindrance of myself. I don't self-promote both of them enough. All right. Cross-promote. And that's, but I try to as much as I can. All but right. It's hard to, hard to keep, you know, both of them being cross-promoted. Right, I get it. So, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I can see, I can clearly see how the two businesses are related. Yeah. When I had my printer repair company, and I was shifting over into the call answering thing, people were like, you're the printer repair guy. And I was like, wait, well, I <laughs> used to be. I'm not anymore. I'm the call answering guy now. Yeah. But people were like, no, you're the printer guy. <laughs> so it took, man, it took five years for that shift to happen. Yeah. Now yours, I can, I would think that most people could relate. Realtor? Yeah, right. Hauling guy. Just uh, yeah. here, we're right in the middle. We're here to help you with both if you need both. Yeah. Because <clears throat> what house doesn't have to be sold that doesn't have junk in it? Everybody's got junk. Oh my gosh. Everybody's got stuff. Mm-hmm. I was you, think it, it, sometimes you take it all with you. If you want to take it all with you, you know that's more power to you. But you're probably going to call us at some point. Oh my god! Yeah, right after <laughs> they moved it. Yeah. <laughs> like, why do I have this? Yeah. Oh, interesting. That is cool. <laughs> What are some things that, for the people across the country that may be considering starting a business like this, what are some things that you think they should know that maybe it took you a little while to learn? Um, probably a mentor, a business, a mentor. A okay. business mentor. All right. Um, it, it's just, again, with that, it mine's more just those groups mm -hmm. on Facebook. There are people that have figured it out before. Right. So all you have to do is ask them, especially, and I think what, takes it away. If I were to call up a, a local competitor mm -hmm. and ask him for something, they'd probably be like, hey, yeah, do I really want right? to take it? <laughs> hey, I'm not going to figure that out. But now we're talking nationwide. Yeah. I'm reaching out to like-minded individuals. They don't really care. They know I'm not going to fly over to Colorado and <laughs> compete with them. So I can get that know, hot tub out yeah, of there. Yeah. So it kind of take removes that barrier and you're like, hey, man, I do want to help that person out. So, you All know, right. there's people in that group that are Fresh, brand new. There's people that have been there 30 years, been doing this for 30 years, and all you gotta do is ask. All right. And they say, hey, look, here's some good, here's a solution for this, and here's this. And we, we keep that group really fun, and if people are really negative, they get rid of the negative people because we're trying to help each other. That's right. the whole point of the group. All right. <clears throat> so That's I would say cool. having some sort of mentor or, or being part of those groups, just don't feel like you have to reinvent everything. All right. And also, one thing I've caught myself, but man, I just want to grow huge. Well, bigger isn't always better. Sometimes you got to have that foundation, like you said, something about, I try to be really systematic of, mm -hmm. here's what I do when I get a call. Here's what I do this. Mm -hmm. And though I'm not big, I try to treat myself like I am a big company. Right. So the foundation's there. If I ever do want to grow, mm -hmm. we just say, okay, we're just plugging in more people or plugging right. more trucks. So I would say that was a little bit of a learning curve to, hey, make sure you have the foundation and be organized and, and just, set, just set yourself up as, I am a big company. I'm, yeah. a, I'm thinking as a big company, but I'm a small company. Gotcha. <clears throat> what is the ideal size for a company like this? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Is it three, five trucks, something like that? <laughs> um, I think it, it depends on just what you're willing to take on. And I mean, for, okay. for what, I, I don't know. I don't know if there is a, a definite answer on that one. I mean, for me personally, I see it as more of like three to four trucks. Okay. It would be, you know, like, I know that there are franchise companies out there that do it, and I think they lose truck, lose um, sight of customer service. And, right. you know, they're just they're trying to feed that overhead of, mm -hmm. we're a giant company, guys. We have to get out here and we have to get through this fast. And, yeah. I, you know, one thing that I try to do with every customer is, okay, we did what you wanted. Do you have anything else we can help you with? Okay. And sometimes they'll say, hey, well, do I have a few more things? Is it going to cost me more? Well, it might, but maybe yeah. not. You know, just going the extra mile and saying, is there anything else we can help you with? Right. Oh, my neighbor, a lady told me yesterday, my neighbor needs some help, so you might want to stop over there. You know, just oh, asking nice. the question of yeah. how can we help you? All right. Can we, can we help you anymore? Is there anything else we can do to help mm -hmm. you? That's cool. <clears throat> That's very cool. Do you, uh, I guess without talking about numbers, 
how do you charge? Is it by the pound, by the trip, by the so, volume of maggots? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we do it by how much stuff you have and what you have. Like okay. for example, like construction debris, it's going to obviously be heavier, so okay. it does cost a little bit more as far as um, weight wise at, at the landfill. So All right. it just depends. I mean, it's it's more of based on what you have and how much you have of it. All right. Um, but again, we try to pride ourselves. We're not taking a, there's some guys that'll take smaller trailers. So they'll have like a, a five by 10 trailer and they're limited in how much they can take. So obviously if they can make another trip, it's yeah. not very cost effective. So they charge more for it. So mm -hmm. we try to say, Hey, we, we have this huge space. We can yeah. take multiple trips, whatever we have to do. But all right. I, I, I challenge people all the time. Hey, this is how much it typically costs if we fill this entire trailer up and, and I said but that is a bigger than it even sounds yeah and when I get there they're like wow that trailer is huge yeah it's, it's, huge. it's <laughs> right. seven by 14 of the built-up sides and it's a big trailer how big is it seven by 14 and yeah, like trailer. it's like five feet high it's essentially like a 15 air dumpster on wheels wow yeah five feet high okay yeah. that is a so beast it's, yeah it's uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah oh wow <laughs> all right yeah it's out on our website. You can see pictures of everything. We're, nice. we're family run too. We just try to try to keep as much as we can in the family. And all right, what's the what's the website? Um, it's callhallitall.com, I believe. Callhallitall.com. Yes. All right, all one word. Yeah. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Man, it's just amazing. I've learned of businesses that are cleaning up after. Um, we call them biohazard stuff, so like yeah. the dead body and stuff yeah. like that. Somebody's got to clean up that up. You're cleaning up the junk. I look in. I mean, it's interesting. You go for a motorcycle ride in the back, back, um, whatever, just the old farms and yeah. back in the country. Yeah. You see junk everywhere. Yeah. And I, there's not a day that goes by when I'm on a motorcycle ride that I don't think someday somebody's going to have to get rid of that. Right? I think that every single day, and I'm like, you'll be calling us someday. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> You imagine. need us. You don't even know it yet, but right. you need us. A boat sitting there for 30 <laughs> years, or you see stuff that you can't yeah. even tell what it is anymore. Yeah. It's got so many weeds and plants and stuff yeah. like that around it. And then I think, whose idea was it to just park that boat <laughs> or park that tractor or whatever, and they're just like, I'm going to take care of that tomorrow. <laughs> and they don't. <laughs> it just sits there. And every time they mow their lawn or do whatever, they're like, ah, I got a boat <laughs> or whatever. Still have it. Yep. Like you think, I just, I can't fathom people just ignoring stuff like that. Yeah, but they do. But I don't know, people probably look at my garage and say, do you have this car anymore, James? What do you have parts for it for? And, and you know what I tell people? A lot of people are embarrassed that they have the stuff they do. I say, hey, don't be embarrassed. We've seen it all A to Z. I mean, we're here to, we're not, oh, we don't judge anybody. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't laugh at you, nothing like that. We're just, we're literally there to help you. So well, it's you a know, challenge, right? It's, it is. Challenge is we'll take care of this, yeah. yeah, we'll take care of it for you. And I can only imagine the person that had that boat in their backyard, once that thing was gone, that would be a huge weight off their shoulders. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my God, because it's so whole. I've been staring at that for 30 years. Yeah. Or whatever, staring at whatever they yeah. have in their backyard. <laughs> that is cool. Have you ever come across something where people are like, I don't want this, get it out, and you're like, wait, this is worth $50,000? <laughs> or something... Um, we did have a couple of wood burning furnaces that a lady wanted to get rid of and we said, you know what, to be honest with you, this, these things are so heavy and they're in such good shape, you're better off just leaving them down here if they're not really bothering you, they're in their basement. Okay. Sell it with the house someday, they're going to, they're nasty to the house, just leave them, leave them there, it'd All be right. better for you. All right. So it, it's going to, because it's going to be expensive, I say it's going to be expensive to remove them. Yeah. Plus, they're, they're worth something, so just keep it for the house. They're just yeah. all cast iron? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> and, well, and one of them was, was newer. Your husband had, had bought them and then passed, he had passed away. Okay. So he'd put it in the, I don't know how he got them in there. <laughs> wow. But somehow, they, she, and she said it was several years when they got them put in there, but she doesn't know how they got in there. All right. But, yeah. Dang. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. It's got to be fun. It is fun. Uh, how about business advice? Do you have a chunk of business advice that you've learned along the way? You've been in real estate a while. Take care of customers. Oh. Just take care of your customers. Find solutions for people, and that'll keep everybody happy. That just take find a way, and they'll keep calling you. I mean, we repeat customers all the time. All right. That's a huge part of our business. Nice. Hey, DJ, we got more cardboard. We got more. The kids have more stuff they want to get rid of. Just keep taking care of customers, and we've already seen that snowball where. Oh, that's awesome. We just get a lot of people that just keep calling. Hey. 
it, we somehow keep getting more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, you should be, uh, Amazon is a huge portion, you know. We get tons of cardboard. I mean, we have different people call us and say, hey, we have lots of cardboard. Great. We'll come recycle it for you. Wow. All right. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I love it. Well, DJ, thank you so much for being on yeah, the show thanks here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, it. Can you tell us the website one more time? Um, yes. It's call, I think it's Call How It All Guy. I, I, call How It All or Call How It All Guy. All right. We'll find it and type yes. it on the screen here okay. so that people know. All right. <laughs> thank you. How about your phone number? Yep. 608 490 Text or call me anytime. 0205. I love it. Yep. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are underwritten locally by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening to this on the web, if you could do us a huge favor, smash that subscribe button, give it the big old thumbs up, and of course, comment and let the world know that DJ is here to haul your junk, save for your dead bodies, right? All in all, <laughs> except for things that had a pulse. Humans that had a pulse, I suppose. <laughs> We'll just leave it at that. My name is James Kateman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for service businesses looking for growth on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs looking for growth on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, DJ Newville, the owner of Hall It All. Tell us that phone number one more time. 608-490-0205. Awesome. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night. The podcast site found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening and watching. Stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business.